Do you, do you remember that from when we were in high school and we had to go to chapel? I sure am glad that chapel was one of our classes in high school. The, do you do you fully remember the porpoise of my life, though? Absolutely. I blocked all that from my oh, memory. Oh, man. I brought that up to Ryan the other day. Mm -hmm. The porpoise of my life? Yeah. He was like, oh, yeah, there was the... The porpoise of my life was an anti-evolution thing. I don't remember anything about that. Oh, dude. It was like... I didn't... I had forgotten about it, too, because I... Because of my childhood, I'm very good at disassociating. <laughs> yeah. Um... So, I was not there the entire chapel. I was there, but I wasn't there. Do you remember when I used to bring in the giant extra, 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 extra large red jacket? Yes, I do remember that. And then when chapel began, I would huddle inside like a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> and I had my Game Boy inside. <laughs> No wonder we couldn't get girlfriends in high school. <laughs> yeah, I distinctly remember that. I remember you had that jacket for years. Yeah. And it, yeah, so you would just hide inside that thing? For chapel? You bet. Oh my god, that's brilliant. That's amazing. It's, it didn't always work. Sometimes I got lambasted. I had very long hair when I was in high school, so a lot of times I would put in little tiny earbuds and put my hair in front of it. Ah. And then run the run the cord from my earbud back behind my neck down my shirt. That's clever, too. Yeah. Um, anyway. They're a lot less discreet than what I did. Yeah. There was a map. I remember there was a science class where I did nothing but play Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland on my Game Boy Advance during science class. How did they not catch you? I have no idea. I have no, to this day, I have no idea how I didn't get caught playing Nightmare in Dreamland. <laughs> I beat Nightmare in Dreamland. In science in class. In science class. It's okay. We were at a Christian school. They weren't giving us a good science education anyway. Yeah, exactly. The, to bring it back to that, the purpose of my life. I know I'm getting way off topic here. But Please do. I, yeah. I, I, had to th I thought about this the other day and I had to bring it back up again because you were there for it as well. There was this presentation with like the fucking Christian... The Christian puppets. But yeah, they had this whole thing where it was, they were singing about the porpoise of my life. And they had like puppet dolphins splashing in the background. Yeah. And it was an anti-evolution thing. Uh-huh. That I didn't even, th I didn't even think about that because I had disassociated so hard <laughs> during the presentation that Ryan had to remind me, oh yeah, that was an evolution, don't believe in evolution thing. I don't remember anything about that presentation. And then in the same presentation, there was a woman that got on stage and gave like a 30 minute long presentation about how she was forced to have an abortion. No. Oh. Like, what does that have to do with an anti- <laughs> <laughs> They always have some insane story. It's never just a normal guy being like, yeah, I mean, my life has been pretty good. And, you know, I, I, I really thank God for every day that my life has been, that my life has been pretty good, that I was born- in the Midwest, mm -hmm. in the United States, and I had a decent life. It's always like, I was attacked by a demon in my sleep, <laughs> and the demon tried to rip my penis off, and I said, by the grace of God, get out of my penis, demon! But by then it was too late, I was already fucking the orange. <laughs> the most satanic of fruits! <laughs> <laughs> the purpose of my life! <laughs> And people wonder why I am an atheist now. I don't like fucking oranges, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a grapefruit kind of guy. More of a grapefruit fucker. I don't know about you, but for me, it's a honeydew. Well, as for me, I came in the kumquat. <laughs> God damn it. Oh my god, so you would play your Game Boy inside your jacket. When I wasn't getting caught, yes. Yeah, when you weren't getting caught. Well, there was one day during chapel, I had just, I had had enough. I was tired of it. Hmm. And I started, I just started playing my Game Boy in the open. Okay. And one of the teachers saw me and took my Game Boy away. They were very disappointed in me. I know, because they said so. Uh-huh. But you're used to disappointing teachers and authority figures, so you don't care. Your parents would be so disappointed in you. No, they know this is the best I can do. <laughs> So he took my Game Boy away, and he was like, I'm giving it to the Dean of Students, and you have to pick it up after school. So I went to the Dean's office after school, and I was like, yeah, I'm here to see the Dean. Uh, my Game Boy got taken away from me, uh, and he has it. And they're like, oh, he's, he's out of his office right now. 
So just wait there, and uh, he'll be back in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then the secretary left, and sitting on his desk was my Game Boy. So I just took it in the note that said who it was taken from and left. <laughs> nice. He never knew! Yeah, he probably was like, somebody fucking stole that shit. And then didn't care, because not his problem. Uh, yeah. Uh, on, the, uh, on the topic of mustaches... I had a minor shaving incident the other day. Yes. Shaving incident sounds weird. <laughs> um, I sliced off part of my face the other day. I cut off part of my whole face. No, um, so I was getting ready to go over to my mom's house for Easter dinner. Mm. And my girlfriend was like, oh, you probably want to like trim up your facial hair beforehand. Because I hadn't, I have my, my facial hair is basically in a goatee. My facial hair doesn't actually like connect up to my sideburns or anything so really the only way i can grow in facial hair is in a goatee mm -hmm. i can't actually grow a beard you can't grow long luscious sideburns and mutton chops like mm -hmm. i could i wish i could nah. it kind of makes me sad that i can't <laughs> i usually trim my facial hair into a goatee but like i had let it go for a while so my 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 neck hair my neck beard was getting quite quite intense quite luscious yeah so I went to the bathroom and I put the, I, I trimmed all, I trimmed all that off with my little electric razor. Cause I actually can't use, I can't use like big razors. I'm uncomfortable with them. Yeah. Those sharp four blade razors don't yeah, work. They make, they make me uncomfortable. So I just use like a, I have a really good electric razor that actually works very well. It trims pretty close to the skin, mm -hmm. but I don't shave every day. So, you know, whatever. Right. Anyway, I put a little spacer on it to like trim down the, the beard and make it. Still retain some hair on there, but, you know, make it not as long and going all over the place. Yeah. You wanted to tidy up your facial yeah, hair. Yeah, just, just clean it up a little bit, you know? So I'm going, I'm, I'm shaving it on, or I'm shaving the hair on there, going against the grain. And then right as I go up the very center of my chin, the little spacer goes boop and pops off. And I just go <laughs> and take it. And you gave yourself a reverse goatee. I gave myself a reverse soul patch. Yeah. Just, <laughs> oh no. And my girlfriend is in the other room and with the fan on, she can hear, Bzzz. oh no. <laughs> what happened? And I opened the door. I'm like, I accidentally shaved a reverse soul patch. I, I, I immediately said, I'm going to have to shave all of this off. Mm. She goes, it's not that bad. You don't have to do that. So I turn on the light and get closer so she can see me. And she goes, oh, no. <laughs> oh, that is bad. Oh. So I just had to go back in the bathroom and just, just shave the rest of it off. And so now I have just a mustache. Yes. And the lack of a beard makes your mustache pop out significantly it more. It really does. It makes me look like I got a big old mustache. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of into it, but maybe that's just because I'm old. Yeah. Yeah. It could grow on you. Yeah. Do you know in the U.S. military why you are only allowed to have a mustache and not facial hair? I did not. It's so that gas masks will still fit. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Because if you have facial hair, it will it can technically break the seal of the gas mask mm -hmm. on the chin. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yep. And that is actually why pre-World War I, all of the action heroes in dime novels... Had big old bushy beards. Post World War One, after the invention of the gas mask, they all had mustaches ah, or were clean shaven. I see. Yeah. In fact, most special operations units in the U.S. military don't really give a shit about you wear having facial hair because they're probably not going to encounter any type of any type of gas mask. Another reason they don't want you to have facial hair is it's it's I guess it's probably difficult to write a uniform code for having. A beard? Eh, maybe. But, I mean, they wrote one for having a mustache, so I would figure they could write one for having a beard, too. Apparently, in the... I forget which I forget which country it is. It's some Nordic country. But you are allowed to have facial hair only if you submit a drawing of what your facial hair will look like beforehand. <laughs> so I've seen on Reddit a couple times people like, yeah, I had to submit it, so here's my drawing. And it's just a circle with a bunch of squiggles under it. <laughs> <laughs> like two dots for the eyes. All right. It's like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I think the British Navy, you're still allowed to have facial hair. I forget. It depends. There's certain militaries you're allowed to, you're allowed to have facial hair. Yeah. And I feel like the whole reason for you're not allowed to have facial hair because it, it breaks the seal on a gas mask. I feel like that's kind of 
not as pertinent anymore because really. most most civilized countries have basically agreed that chemical weapons are fucked up and we don't want to use them. Right. There's probably better ways we can attack our enemies than with chemical weapons. Yeah, there's a lot of international pressure against it. And also, if you use chemical weapons, then that just means that everyone is now going to use chemical weapons on you. Mm. And those are real fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Have you ever, like, looked into VX poison no, gas? No, I'm not interested in that. Oh, it's super fun. The British invented VX poison gas, and we, the United States, wanted the recipe for VX poison gas so badly, we told the UK how to make hydrogen bombs. Jeez. <laughs> they, had, they had already made their own atomic bomb, which, for the record, there is a difference between an atomic bomb and a hydrogen bomb. Okay. We told them how to build a hydrogen bomb in exchange for the formula for VX gas. Okay. That is how badly we wanted that. Dang, didn't realize. It's fucked. Wow. VX poison gas is a nerve agent, which, without getting into gruesome details, uh, basically it causes, if I recall correctly, it, uh, nerve agents basically cause all the nerve synapses in your body to start firing. Right. So they cause, like, they cause you to start, like, tensing up. You'll start salivating and, uh, like, drooling really heavily and a bunch of snot comes out of your nose. You get bloodshot eyes. And eventually you get, like, really bad heart palpitations to the point where your heart stops working. Basically, your entire body just, like, seizes up. Oh, this isn't a fun tangent. We were having fun about your facial hair. Now we're talking about having nerve agents being dumped on us. Because I, I think they're very interesting. I think it's, very, I think it's important to, intre- or to, to research things that are bad that you think should be banned. Because there should be a reason why you're banning them other than they're scary. Ah, uh, now we're going to cycle it back to firearm regulations. I mean, we don't have to talk about that. That's fine. <laughs> we don't have two hours to talk about no, that. No, we don't have two hours to talk about that. But anyway, yes, I had to shave off my whole like chin of facial hair. And basically everybody I've talked to has been like, yeah, it doesn't look that bad, man. Yeah. It's fine. This, this is all right. Yeah. Oh, did I tell you I no longer have a, a debit card right now? No. Yeah, because um, not anything I did. Uh, I received a text message from my bank's fraud protection thing that was like, Hey, are you trying to spend $500 on FanDuel? FanDuel? Yeah, it's an online gambling thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's great. I see commercials for it all the time, and I'm so fucking sick of it that I want to murder the man that invented it. So you want to give them all of your money so they'll stop asking for it? No, I'm not trying to spend $500 on FanDuel. Why do you ask? Oh, because we got a warning saying that you're trying to spend $500 on FanDuel, and that doesn't seem like something that you would normally do. Yeah, I super wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Can we call you? Yes, you can. So they called me, and they're like, yeah, we just want to go over some of these transactions and see if they're valid. Um, so I have, uh, let's see, uh, $25 at FanDuel. Nope, not me. $200 at FanDuel. Nope, not me. $350 at Fan. Nope, not me. Ba- yeah, basically, uh, FanDuel... Or someone tried to use my card to spend about $700 on FanDuel. Uh Uh-huh. The only reason I bring this up is because I'm very glad I'm at a point in my life where $700 was fraudulently charged on my card. And I didn't have an immediate panic attack and think, how am I going to eat today? Yeah. I'm very glad that I'm at that point in my life. Yeah, it took us a while to get here. Yeah. It's really nice not being like... Holy shit, this needs to get figured out right this very second. If this doesn't get resolved, I'm killing myself. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that I was, I'm able to be like, oh, okay, the 700, fine. Yeah, I can deal with that. I will just wait for that money to go back into my account now. <laughs> yeah. How did they get their hands on your bank account? Hmm. Um, either it was part, either my, my debit card number was part of a massive data leak, which happens all the time. Or maybe you were a callous and left your... Account open in public. Mm. No, I don't think that was the case. So it was either that happened. Card scanner, perhaps. Yeah, like a card skimmer. It could have been a... There's literally computer programs that just generate fake credit card information until they find one that actually works. Uh So it could have been that. um, Or it could have been one of the stores that I went to uh, stole my credit card information. Could have been a number of things. Could have been a whole wide variety of things. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say. There were two raccoons clowning on my deck last night. Goodness. I'm going to have to get one of, that, one of the firearms. What? Why? <laughs> don't shoot the raccoons. they they got to stop eating my bird seed. Don't shoot the raccoons, though. They're friends. No. They're just out there, man. Put some... Buy... Okay, here's what you do. Here's what you do. Go get a bowl 
fill it with cracked corn because cracked corn is cheap as hell. Uh huh. And then just put that out on the porch. I don't want to feed the raccoons. That's the opposite of what I want to do. Yeah, but then the raccoons and the sparrows will eat from the cracked corn and you'll get normal birds at your normal bird feeder. No, they'll probably just eat both. I'm just going to feed the entire forest, aren't I? So what I, I have changed, I've changed my bird feeders. Oh, bird feeder update, yes. Bird feeder update. Um, this may, this might be the actual final bird feeder update because things are actually going well. Smooth? Things are going smooth. So I took the, I took the pole down that had the bird feeder hanging from it because the squirrels kept getting into it. Mm -hmm. Even if I greased the pole or put up other, other stuff, it wouldn't have mattered. The squirrels would have kept getting into it. You don't think putting a slinky on it would have solved the problem? No, no, I don't think so. What I did, I took the pole down. What I did is I got one of the fly-through bird feeders that's basically just like, it's like a little gazebo, kind of. <laughs> All right. But for birds. And it's hanging from the ceiling of my porch. Mm -hmm. I have the suet feeder hanging from the ceiling of the other side of the porch. Okay. The fly-through bird feeder is filled with peanuts. So far, the squirrel has not been able to get into either of the bird feeders. I've seen him try to climb the screen... Like once or twice, but then once he figured out that he couldn't really jump from the screen to the bird feeder, he hasn't come back. Okay. And that was like a week and a half ago mm -hmm. was the last time I saw him up there. Now that he's figured out he can't really get to the bird feeder, he hasn't bothered coming back. All right. You have defeated the squirrel. The suet feeder is just getting chip, chip, chipped away at by the sparrows. Mm-hmm. Because they can, they can land on the suet feeder and they can get to the suet, but not for very long. Mm. They're not really, their little sparrow bodies aren't really built for holding on to the suet feeder the way that they're supposed to and getting in there. But more importantly, they don't really seem to like the peanuts very much. Mm -hmm. So they basically have been eating from the suet feeder and not from the peanut bird feeder. But the birds that have been eating from the peanut bird feeder are Nuthatch, Titmouse, Cardinal, Blue Jay occasionally. Good stuff. Uh, grackles, which I would prefer not, but whatever. They're, they kind of show up once or twice. All right, stop them. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to be able to stop the Grackles. Um, what else? What else? I've had quite a few. Oh, the, uh, both the woodpeckers really, oh, like, yeah. really like eating the peanuts. Mm -hmm. the flamingo here. And penguin, man, if a flamingo showed up, I would be surprised. <laughs> oh, did you see the thing about that flamingo that, that was spotted in Texas? No, that has been a, that has been escaped for 17 years. I was unaware. Oh man, long story short, I'm going to try to summarize it for you really quick. Mm -hmm. uh, there were two flamingos that were captured from Tanzania. They, they were part of a whole bunch of flamingos uh -huh. that were put into a zoo in Kansas, and basically they ended up escaping and flying away. And these flamingos have been on the run for 17 years. No one could catch these flamingos, huh? Well, also the zoo kind of just doesn't really care. They're, they belong to the wild now. Yeah, but they, somebody spotted this flamingo in Texas. And it just lives in Texas and hangs out with a bunch of uh, these birds called a spoonbill. Okay. Because they look kind of like flamingos. So it's probably <laughs> just like, hey, you guys are weird looking flamingos. So it just hangs out with them. But yeah, it's uh, just living it, it's living its best flamingo life. Huh. Um, anyway... So yeah, I think what I'm what I'm gonna keep doing is depending on how much the little suet plugs cost, I'll just keep putting the suet plugs in there. The sparrows can go to town on those. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. And the peanuts will be for the other birds. Okay. I may have solved my sparrow slash squirrel problems. I did like the first day I had that that bird feeder. Mm. It was hanging from like a 3M hook from the ceiling right and it was super windy that day and the bird feeders went whoop and flew off of the hook uh, crashed on the ground and broke did you have to bend the the hook to make it tighter uh no because it was actually just like a wire loop at the top okay the the wire loop did completely break though mm. there were these little like plastic or these little metal clips that were holding the wire loop onto the bird feeder and they completely sheared off so i just made a new i made a new hanger for it out of paracord okay <laughs> And then I just screwed the bird feeder back together. It's as good as new. And then I also wrote... <laughs> oh, wait. I know. I know why there's no sparrows on it. Mm. Because I took a Sharpie and I wrote on the inside of the bird feeder, no sparrows allowed. <laughs> yes. All sparrows are literate. Yeah. Little known fact. Well, they can't... They haven't landed on it. So clearly they have They have seen it and they're like, yeah, but you've got suet over there and that suet's real tasty. Yeah. And also, that says I'm not allowed. <laughs> so I'm kind of a jerk, but at least I respect the rules, goddammit. Yeah. I don't know what it is about my suet cakes, but the raccoons just love to devour them. Like the, the It's because they're animal fat. 
Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, you don't you don't you didn't know that's what suet is? I had no idea. Suet is animal fat with like uh other things added to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, raccoons love that shit. Okay. Then I probably don't have to bring the regular bird feeder in, just the suet cakes, because that's what keeps disappearing when the raccoons show up. Yeah, I mean I don't know how they get their tiny little hands. Like the suet cake is in the cage and the cage is locked. Like somehow they're I guess scraping it through the little gaps oh yeah they're probably just grabbing it pulling it up to the gaps and then just like scraping it off little bits at a time man they they, they do that an entire cake in an evening though yeah raccoons are raccoons are very very smart they're capable of solving like simple locks i'm not saying well, i'm not saying that they can't get to the suet cake it's, it's it's fine but it just seems like a lot of work to peel it piece by piece and they do it you are underestimating what a raccoon will do when it is hungry. I guess so. <laughs> they will. They will figure it out. It's. It was kind of funny because I open the door and go, "Get out of here!" And, and they're like, "All right, fine, I'll mosey on." So I grabbed a cup of water and threw it out of him. He goes, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the poor raccoon. Clumsy little idiot. 